<clears throat> Fine. Whew. Okay, enough of 2020. Let's move on to 2021, all right? <laughs> okay, shake it off, shake it off. You remember what your coach told you, shake it off, shake it off. Um, we were just talking about that this morning, uh, what we learned from 2020 and then this 20. And I'm just going to make a little statement. I'm, you know me with my just sayings. Uh, Mad Max was set in 2021. I'm just saying. So uh, we may need to buckle in for 2021 too. I don't know. But we were talking about things we learned uh, in 2020. I learned, you remember when things got cranked up first with the virus and everything? And in my neighborhood, suddenly all these people were walking that never walked before. And all these husbands were walking with their wives. And I can tell you, what I learned in 2020 was they're not that big on walking around the neighborhoods with their wives. Because you could see them, they look like Dawn of the Dead, man. Just walking beside them like, please. Because every house was like, and I, let me tell you about her and him. No, 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 no. Let me tell you about them. Because they know all the gossip, what's going on in the neighborhood. The husband's just like, I'm at work all day. I'm not around here. So, uh, yeah, I learned that one. Jarrett had a good one, which was, go ahead, JP. What was yours? I learned that Super Y comes on at 8 a.m. And then Clifford the Big Red Dog comes on at 8.30. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. So when you're with your kids at the house, you learn some of these shows you didn't know before, and you know exactly what time they come on, so you can time your day with them. Um, and uh, we also, and by the way, let me get this out there. JP's birthday, JP is his birthday Thursday. His son's birthday is today, so that's pretty cool. Real close, right? So they can remember him real well. Um, what else did we learn in 2020? Um, oh, we learned that working from home was cool in the beginning, but after a while, it wasn't so cool. So uh, a lot of people I've talked with went, yeah, in the beginning it was kind of cool, but now yeah, I'm kind of over it. And I know for me, I just, I miss the contact with folks and seeing folks out there and talking with people and, uh, and, uh, and being able to hang out with my Parametrics family out there and talking with y'all. And I'm going to go ahead and say this. Um, uh, one of our parametrics family right now is going through a lot, and um, you know we talk about this on uh, on the webinars, and it's a uh, you know it's a privilege to pray with somebody, and uh, his mother's not doing well at all, and uh, she's uh, one of the things is she does have the virus, and that it's not looking good. So um, we're uh, we're praying for you, Keith. You know that, and um, it's a privilege to do so, and just thank you for letting uh, me do that, and. Um, so we, get, we still get to hear about that stuff. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, my boss's parents both have it right now. And it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's been spiking and we're dealing with it uh, even now into 2021. So we're having to deal with that. So, um, so there's been a lot on our plate between that and the news and everything else. Uh, I'd say it's a pretty good time to pray. So I'm going to go ahead and pray right now and open this thing up. And uh, then we'll go ahead and get started, all right? <clears throat> Father, thank you so much uh, for this time this morning. Uh, for a time to uh, to get back in the swing of things and add a little normalcy to uh, what has become our normalcy now, which is doing these uh, every week. And uh, Father, also just I lift up all the people that are uh, they're worrying, they're suffering, they're uh, scared. And Father, I know that uh, hopefully they know you because in knowing you, we get comfort that no one can understand. Uh, you're always there for us, no matter what, Lord. You're always there right beside us. Leave the Holy Spirit with us to give us comfort. And Father, it's just right now, it's, it's troubling times and going into a new year. We, like, we would love to see a fresh start. Things start going back in a positive direction. And Father, I'm just going to lift up, I would just, man, all this hate. I just would really, really love to see a lot less hate. Uh, so, uh, Father, help folks with that. I mean, this is, that's not helping anything. Uh, the hate that we're seeing and displayed in events around this country hasn't helped us one bit except just split us up and divide us. And So we lift you up and... Uh, and we know that you are God and that there is only one God and you being the God, Father, that, uh, that you're in control of all this. So, uh, Father, just give us peace and comfort in the midst of all this and give us uh, that comfort of knowing you are in control. And, Father, we just, uh, again, thank you for this time this morning. Let everything go well and hopefully uh, all of the technology and everything will run well this morning and we can not only learn how to do our jobs better but uh, safer. So all of these things I ask and say according to the will of the one who paid it all, my brother Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank y'all. All right, where's my clicker? All right, so Chris and I are going to be talking to y'all today about 4S. Um, we have added the 4S option to the bench now. 
Um, so uh, we have a 3S, 4S on that, uh, that one socket we've got. So now it, it's opened us up to talk about 4S metering a little bit. So we're going to talk about the, uh, the fundamentals, uh, connecting it up, why a 4S, differences between 4S, 3S, 2S, so why you would use it. Um, then uh, next week we will uh, actually do some, uh, do some troubleshooting uh, with, the, uh, with the 4S, show some error scenarios in that. And we're working on, um, it's, we're fighting uh, Mother Nature on this one, but we're working on doing some actual field tests and we're going to have some field testing out there and, have, and we're going to video that. Um, and Jared is going to do editing until he's sick of it when <laughs> we just sit there and film, 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 film out in the field. It's just going to be basically just roll it, Jared, and then, of course, we're going to hand him the mess afterwards and expect him to edit everything out. But, uh, which I don't. How's that different? Yeah, I don't, well, it's going to be even more than normal. <laughs> Believe me, when you're out there, yeah, and a truck backfires or, or something happens, you're going to go, Ugh. So uh, it's going to be out in the fields even more. Here's a little controlled, a little. But out there, it's whew, roll the dice, baby. So, so we're going to try and do that. If we have to slide it one more week because of the weather, we will. But that is our plan. And unfortunately, um, it messed us up and, and the weather doesn't look good for next week. But that's our plan. But we are going to do that. That's the next thing on our agenda here in the room here is to do some field testing and, get, and use that as part of the, part of the webinar. So, so we're pretty jacked about that because that should be pretty cool. So what are we going to talk about today? All right, on the agenda today, we, uh, we've got the new 4S uh, meter on the, uh, on the training bench on the 8833. So we're going to uh, show, show you that on there. And, and the purpose is uh, why, why would you use a 4S? And then um, also you've got... Uh, you got the wiring and vector diagram review, which we're going to do that. We're going to go over the diagrams. What does a 4S diagram look like? And then we're also going to say, well, why would you use a 4S versus a 2S? Or why would you use a 4S versus a 3S? And then we'll actually connect up and do a test. You can see how we connect one up. And we'll do a normal test for you on the 4S. Um, and please, uh, maybe I don't say this enough. If you've got any questions or anything, you know, send them in on the chat room. If you've got any suggestions or any input, you know, uh, because uh, you guys might not know this, but Mullins will say something to me. He'll say, hey, so-and-so just said blah, blah, blah. So, um, so please, you know, if you have any input or any questions or anything, yeah, say, get in there on the chat room and Mullins will let me know, all right? So uh, we're going to look over here. We've got the uh, walk over here to the, to the bench here. So as you've known, we've had, this, uh, we've had this as a 3S socket, and we've utilized it for training in the past. You've seen some webinars on 3S's and how to test 3S's, some of the error scenarios on 3S's. Well, now this is going to have the option to be either a 3S or a 4S socket, okay? So you'll have the option of switching with that because we realize that most people uh, have 4S's also, so that if, you're, if you've got 4's, uh, there's a good chance that you've got 3's and 4's, so why wouldn't you have both of them? So, so we now have the 4S on here, so that's what we're going to be showing for the next couple of days, that we do have the uh, capability of offering 4S metering over on this socket over here, this far right socket right here, okay? And it's got, uh, it's got a bunch of error scenarios with it. I think there's like seven different error scenarios. Yeah, yeah there you go, seven different error scenarios on it. And I, like I said, this will support both a 3S and a 4S. But we did want to have, um, we did want that 4S available because so many people have the 4S out there, all right? The purpose of a 4S, it's a single phase three wire service, right? I've got uh, two phase wires in a neutral. It is non-Blondell compliant. Um, some people call it a one and a half element. And then uh, the voltage is summed up at the meter. So what, you, what we're saying here is, and you can see here off of what you're looking at, you can see I've got two CTs, right? So you can see over here I've got X1, X2, and X1, X2. You can see my two CTs there and there. And uh, so I am seating it at two places. So you remember, when we're setting up those services on the, uh, on the Power Masters, you remember that you serve it off of, you're, you're picking off of the, uh, the, the uh, primary current, the PC on there. So it's going to be two PC, right? Because it's got two primary currents that it's measuring right here. Okay? So on this one, you're going to have two CTs. So it will say two PC for you on there, which is the primary currents. And as we said before on the previous webinars, that's indicative of where you're going to put your uh, flexes or where you're going to grab the primary current to uh, do a ratio test on those CTs. Okay. Yeah, notice on the diagram, there is no PTs here. We're just having CTs. So you're getting potential right off the, off the uh, CT line. Right. And, and you're actually, you've only got one. You can see the red over here with the currents and the, and the voltages right here. 
So you can see that we're actually, we've got uh, two currents and we've got one voltage. Yeah, you've got two currents, uh, the, the current stabs on the left uh, in a forward direction and the stabs on the right are in a negative direction, which hints why you're getting the one and a half element mis or nomer that uh, people have called it. It's kind of like the Z coil where they had the, the backwards element similar here, we have a backwards element. But the critical part is that you have to wire your X1, X2 correctly. Ah. What, what happens if I get X1, X2 uh, incorrect on either one of those phases? Anybody out there know what happens? That was a great question. So Mullins asks, what if we swap X1 and X2? What is going to happen to our meter? Well, we know, well, I shouldn't just, what's gonna happen on my CT test and what's going to happen on my meter test? There's two different things, right? So what, if I swap X1 and X2, what's going to happen on my meter test and what's going to happen on my CT test? I'm gonna take a drink of water while y'all are. Is anybody answering? Steven Schaefer thinks he knows. <laughs> well, if you think you know Schaefer, then tell us. <laughs> I did give Steven credit. <laughs> did Steve get it right? Oh, did he get it right? He hasn't answered yet. Oh, he hasn't answered yet? Yeah, Adam Pierce got it exactly right. Uh, cancel the CTs are canceled out. So basically, the meter will not turn. Good job, Adam. Perfect, Adam. Perfect, Adam. And I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure uh, Schaefer knew that as well. Carolina boy. Josh got it as well. Carolina boy, Josh got it. Good. Then y'all are on top of it. Because see, what would happen is we're talking about you've got, uh, you're looking at the power, right? And that's what our, our meter is looking for is the power. And how is it going to measure that power? It's going to be the voltage times the current times power factor, right? But now I'm only dealing with two here, right? I've got the voltage on A times the current on A times the power factor on A plus voltage on B, current on B, and power factor on B. So I'm just adding those two up, right? I don't have a third phase now. I don't have a third set of power here that I'm measuring. So what happens? The one can cancel the other out now because there's only two of them. So if, they, if it's a very balanced load, it's going to just about cancel out to where I got zilch. Right. If it's if it's unbalanced, then I may get a little bit, and it'll turn very very slowly. Right. But if those two, if if I have it backwards on on A, and it's the opposite, then A will cancel out B. I don't have that third phase to give me a little bit or something. You know, when we talk about three phase four wire, we say you're losing two thirds. That's because we have that third phase that's going to give us something because the two are canceling out here. We don't have the third one, so those two cancel one another out, and we get zilch. Good point. Okay. Cool. <clears throat> Anything else? Okay. So ah. here's the uh, power. So if, you're, if we're calculating power, if you're looking at it just mathematically, you, you take VA minus VB and the product, uh, well, I'm sorry, and the summation of IA plus IB, which really translates to one potential, VAB, times IA plus IB. What it's really doing, as far as mathematically in the meter, it's taking VA times AA and the cosine of A theta plus VB times IB and the cosine theta B. Now the problem here is that because we have one potential, two currents, uh, there is no really cosine theta of B. Mm. The, and so if you look at the math, and this is kind of the things to be aware of, this happens to, to uh, Notice that also a 2S meter, which is also non-Blondel. Uh, so it, this, this calculation applies to both a 2S and a 4S. But mm -hmm. if you think about it, if you have unbalanced voltages, but your currents are balanced, everything's hunky-dory. If you have unbalanced currents, but your voltages are balanced, that's okay too. The problem occurs is when you have unbalanced voltages and unbalanced currents. That's when uh, you have errors. Now, is it a registration error? Like, for example, if you do a meter test, are you still going to get 100%? Yes, because it's calculating mm -hmm. the right amount of energy to the pulse constant. What the error is going to be is your accumulated KW is going to be off slightly. Right. Now, mathematically, this is exactly correct, but in the big scheme of things, is it really critical that I tie this down to a residential 2S meter? or maybe a 4S meter, probably not. 
critical thing for mm -hmm. for utility. They want to focus on the big guys right. on their you know high you know high KVA customers. They want to focus on that. Sure, but. Just, just, just something to be aware of when you're out in the field that there is a possibility because it's non blondel compliant that you could have inherent errors if you have imbalances of both the current and the voltages. And we'll leave it at that. Yeah. Cool. So you can see our vector here. You have the, the two 120 volt uh, sources are in phase here. So you can see. The phase to ground is 120 and the phase to phase is 240. So it gives you options, right, with a 4S. I can get two 120 volt, uh, I've got two 120 volt uh, sources there, or I can go 240 going phase to phase. All right? And then so you can see a unity power factor. I can see I've got my, remember the solid arrowhead, darker one is going to be my current. So I can see right there, seeing those two solid arrowheads, I see I've got two currents. And I see one open arrowhead. So just glancing at it from the descriptions we keep talking about over and over and over, I can just look and see, oh, I got two currents and one voltage. And that is what I've got here. I've got that VAB Chris talked about, which was, remember, the summation of the two. And then we've got the two uh, distinct currents there. So I've got two separate currents. Now, this looks a little wacky. And this would be if you were going to do a um, the uh, a phantom load test and so you're going to go only a 50 percent power factor so if you go 0.5 power factor you can see where it throws it out now because they're going to go out right it goes out that 60 degrees off of where it was right so you can see my v my ia has rotated off of vab it's come down 60 degrees right so because that's what 50 percent power factor at 0.5 is a 60 degree angle right so the cosine of of 60 is 0.5 so you can see it shifted over 60 and shifted over 60 both of them shifted 60 degrees there So one out of two S. They look very, very similar there, right? Look at the wiring. The wiring looks very similar. Exact same load coming off exact the same, same distribution load, side. Lugs, everything looks cool. Except for the little loops and curls up at the top, right? On my color diagram that I see. I got that red one and that yellow one up at the top. What do those designate? Schaefer. What do those designate? <laughs> I know he knows. He's seen him a million times. CTs, right? So the difference is I'm CT'd on my 4S versus not on my 2S. So you can see where I've got my two CTs there. That's what the, the loops at the top. We've talked about those on our color diagrams. When you first go into an integrated site test, it shows you that color diagram before the meter test and before the CT test. And it shows you that to show where you're going to place the CTs. Sometimes it shows you double wrap and loop and whatever. In this case, you've got one on A and one on B phase, right? No CTs on the 2S. So what will that allow me to do? I can go up higher, right? If I got CTs, I can go with a higher current. I'm limited on my current with that 2S meter, but I'm not with the 4S because I've got the CTs. So you can see I got 200 amp max on a, on a 2S, but if I got those big houses, like Billy Diedrich showed me and drove me around one day over at NES over some of the country folks, uh, singers and entertainers and in the business houses. You need a 4S for that house. 200 ain't gonna make it, not the houses I saw. Yeah, 400 amp so, services, pretty common. Yeah, yeah, they were some big houses. So, um, so in that case, yeah, you're gonna need to go higher. So if you gotta go with the higher current, then you're gonna need a 4S so that you can use those CTs, okay? Both Josh and Steve have got your answer. Nice, nice. So now a 3S, well, why wouldn't you use a 3S? So you can see here, look at the difference in those color diagrams. You can see over on the left side, and we talked about it before, that's where it's showing you where you're, um, you're doing the uh, figure eight. So you can see a figure eight on that A phase, right? Flex, you can see it up at the top, that figure eight. Yeah, very good, thanks JP. So you can see that figure eight up there. Whereas I'm separated on the 4S, so I'm separated, I've got separate CTs on there. So what would be the difference? Why, what is the, the difference between using a 3S versus a 4S? That's this, having those separate uh, CTs like that and the separation, I have more options, right, as far as the, the voltages that I have available. So if you look right here, it should say, yeah, there you go. So it's load dependent. I only got two wires with my 3S, right? With a 4S, I got three wires. So what, what can I do? I can get 120 volt, two different spots. I can get 240 volt with a 4S, but I just get the 240 volt with a 3S, right? So if I got a bunch of 208 lighting out at a park or a ball field or something like that, 
then I use a 3S on it. But if I need more options available, which you do, you know, like we were talking about a big house, you know, I got a lot of, a lot of 120 running around in there, I need to have that 4S to have those, uh, those other options on my voltages, okay? So you can see here, and it says at the bottom, yeah, there it is, uh, 3S uh, traffic lights, ballpark lights, and the 4S uh, large homes, okay? So I have those, I have more options so that I have more distri distribution points, so to speak, with the 4S than I do a 3. Field connexiones. So you can see here that the way we're going to make our connections are, right, if uh, you look to the right there, and I've got those would be my duct bills, right? So I've got uh, my A currents and my B currents. I've got my shunt and I've got my return, and I've got my shunt and my return on my uh, A phase and B phase. So that's where I'm going to put my duct bills in. And over on the left over here, I've got, you can see, Chris has laid this out really well to see it easily. You can see I got VA and then VB neutral, right? So I got, I'll have my alligator clip on A phase, my red on A phase, I'll have my yellow for B phase, and I'll have uh, it at the neutral, and then I'll also have my neutral connected there. Okay, so I connect both my neutral and B phase voltage at the same point right there. Okay? So if we go over here, Going in. Going okay. <laughs> so let's look at let's look here and see what we've got. Remember, we lo just looked at that diagram, right? And the way Chris laid it out for us, he had right here. We can see just exactly the way Chris had it. We've got I've got my return and my shunt. You can see right here for A phase, and my return and my shunt right here for B phase, right? So I got A phase and B phase. I've got my shunt switch. Right? And then right beside it, I've got where I put my duct bill in. Right there, okay? So I've got shunt return and shunt return for A and B phase. Now if I come over here to the left side, just the way Chris laid it out for us, I've got my red alligator on A phase, right? Then over here on B phase, I've got both my B phases connected here and my neutrals connected there. Exactly the way Chris laid it out on the diagram. So we are, we're connected up exactly the way it looks like on there for us to run this test. So. We're going to go ahead and run a test now. So I have set up a 4S uh, site in here. Um, I think you guys have seen us set up enough sites that you don't need me to see how to set up a site. If you do call us, we'll, we'll do a webinar with you. But, um, but yeah, so I've already got a site in there. And you can see up in the upper right-hand corner, like we we'll always talk, you know what site you're on by looking up in the upper right-hand corner. So up in the upper right-hand corner, you can see I'm on site 4S. I just created one called 4S. And then I'm going to go right here and do integrated site test. But what do we always say and preach? We always say take a look at the vectors first, right? So let's take a look at those vectors first. I don't want to, I want to practice what I preach, right? So let's take a look at the vectors. Nice. So we can see here we've got just a little bit of a shift, right? Uh, it's not unity, but we've got a little bit of a shift of a power factor, which we should out there in the real world. Okay, so we can see we got a little bit of a shift here. So we've got uh, a little bit of, a, of an angle here shifting here. Sure. Ready? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so uh, so you can see here that we had Chris put a little bit of a, uh, use the bench to put a little bit of a phase shift on there for us, so it's not at unity. So you can see here, it looks exactly like we had on the slides we showed earlier. We've got our B current over here, right? And we've got our A current over here, and then we've got that VAB, right? The summation of the two right here for our voltages. Okay, so we don't see anything really squirrely there. Um, so we can look at, we can toggle and look between primary and secondary. So remember we said this, we keep talking about this and talking about it. I, I got to check that primary to make sure I don't have a primary problem before I go into the test. Because once I go into it, I don't have those tabs available at the bottom. Okay, so I looked, nothing looks squirrely. Primary is coinciding with the secondary. The secondary looks good and primary looks good. 
Nothing looks really out that would tell me I've got an issue so far. Okay? So, uh, so we did went through our uh, checking out the primary ahead of time, looking to see if there's anything squirrely on the vector. So now we can go ahead and just go into the test, all right? I haven't seen anything so far that makes me want to step back and assess things. So I'm going to go into number two. I'm going to do an integrated site test. Look through here, and you know what I always do. I'm going to make it 30 seconds or three revs. Thirty seconds or three revs, and then I'm going to go. I don't. You see right there. If I had double wrap, but you looked a second ago, I don't have a double wrap on here. I would check the double wrap box. But everything looks cool. I don't have double wraps. So everything looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hit next. Color diagram looks similar to what we just uh, saw on the slides that Chris made. So you can see here, I should be on B and A with my flexes, and I am over here, and I'm on A and B voltages. That's cool, and I'm on my neutral, and I have them connected correctly, which is I have both uh, B phase uh, voltage and neutral at the same point, and I've got my duct bills A and B are in there, and I've got my flexes are on A and B phase down here, so everything looks okay. So I'm going to hit next. Color diagram, nothing there that's scary to us. That is, that looks good. It's just that we got a little bit of a power factor there, right? Continue. So now we're just going to look for our pulses, for our pickup that we've got over there, that magnetic pickup. You can always wait for two what the professor told me, so that's what I'm going with. That's pretty darn good. I think we can live with that. So um, 100.012, that's what we got on our registration. Um, so what we really wanted to go over today was just, this would be just Kind of talking about what the 4S, why do you use a 4S? Is that too far? A little bit what? too far. Okay, why do you use a 4S versus a 2 or a 3? Um, just showing the connections, kind of getting an idea of that whole uh, VAB thing, of where it's summing it up, but what's really going on, you know, behind the scenes, which is we talk about it all the time, that's those watts, right? Voltage times current times power factor. So it's just summing the two of them up. So, um, and we wanted to go over a normal one. Now, coming up on the next one, we're going to go into some of the errors and uh, error scenarios. And we're going to talk about what Chris mentioned earlier, which is what happened if you swap them? What happens? You'll get to see what happens, and you will get, you know. So, we're going to go through all that. Uh, and uh, on the next one, we'll do more, we're going to do error scenarios in that. And hopefully, God willing, we'll get a break in the weather and we can get out there and do some field testing. So, that's all we're waiting on right now. And we're going to get out there and do that. Um, is there anything I need to click on? I'm good? Cool. Um, so, uh, so look forward to that. Um, I guess um, with that, we'll um, I'll sign off. Is there anything? JP, you're cool. All right. Happy birthday um, to JP. They can register for next week's webinar right below the screen there. Oh, below the video there. Oh, below the video. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's been a change to that. They can register now below it. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, I didn't, okay, so JP's added a deal where you can just register right below the video now. So if you want to register for the, for the next, uh, for next week. So we'll be going through error scenarios and problems with the 4S next week. And then hopefully, like I said, we'll be able to get some, uh, some field testing done between uh, now and the following one because we, we'd love to actually let you guys see some of the stuff that we talk about in here, but see, and see it done out in the field. So that's our, that's our next project. So, uh, but uh, thank everybody. We really appreciate it. Uh, appreciate the support. And, and the loyalty and, uh, and staying in there with us on this thing. And hopefully 2021 will be a lot better than 2020. And uh, God bless. And please be careful out there. Be careful out there, both work-wise and then virus-wise. All right? Thank you all.